Hey, how many of you have a 20, 30, 40, 50 year old Ruger 1022 carbine? How many of you would like to punch groups like this with that using the cheapest range ammo that you can get your hands on, the Federal 36 grain copper plated hollow point? I'm gonna take Hey guys, welcome back to Beyond Seclusion. I want to talk about the Ruger 1022. This is the first gun for a lot of us. This is an ideal first gun for young people and first time shooters. It's a 22 long rifle. They've been around for years. A lot of you like me have one that's, you know, 40, 50 years old that may not be working or not working properly. What I want to cover is replacing any broken parts or things that aren't working well. This isn't modifying it from the original factory function or configuration, <laughs> my peacock. So what I want to do is provide you with sort of ideas of how you may want to proceed because there's so many different options and available items that cost, you know, ridiculous amounts of money. What are we going to get the most bang for our buck? And what kind of results are we going to get with that? Okay, so I've got some of the upgrades in. I've got the Volkortsen. I did the trigger, the hammer, and the extractor. The trigger is going to be the biggest thing. And then I, nothing else. And then I've dropped it in the Boyd stock, which is really comfortable. Um, I like it. A little bit windy out here, but I just want to see what I can do at 100 yards with some iron sights before we do any optics. I also put the Spartan on here, but again, you can piece all this together, but I'm focusing right now on the upgraded hammer and, and then just putting it in the stock and seeing what we get. I like the Volkortsen upgraded trigger. It's got a long reset, not like the drop-in, but you're also saving almost $200. The brake is crisp, it's clean, it's light. The reset, it's long. You decide what you want. Let's go take a look at the groups. That's not bad using the iron sights and considering my vision is not so good these days. This is what I, I was using was just the factory iron sights that have been on there for, you know, 40 years. I'm happy with that. Okay, so real fast, we're using Federal, basically the cheapest bulk ammo I can get. I got this at two cents a round. We got a really nice group, drop-in trigger. Not, sorry, not the drop-in trigger, the upgrade Volkortsen hammer and, you know, sort of their trigger job, very economical. I would start with that. Next thing for me, I would do the Boyd's gun stock. Absolutely love this stock. It is just comfortable. I think it's going to make a difference with that and the trigger. I was getting pretty good groups with iron sights considering I can't use iron sights anymore. My vision just... I tried shooting some of the little spinner targets and was not having the best of luck. The group should have got me on there, but it gets blurry. Anyway, the next thing is I want to put a Picatinny rail on here. And for me and a lot of you guys, you need an optic so we can do the whole vision thing. Let's do that and see what the next tier up is going to be. And then we're going to swap out and try some different barrels. We're going to go up to the next level here. What I did was... This gun was sold, the screws had fallen out or were lost or whatever for the scope mount. So I found the cheapest scope mount, Picatinny rail that I could find on Amazon. It was under $10 delivered and it came with the screws. I did use my Vortex rings and my Nikon scope, which aren't necessarily the cheapest, but I had them on another rifle. So I just quick took them off. 
tossed them on here, did a quick zero. I took my glasses off for this one. I don't like looking in the scope with glasses. I'm gonna try some of this wolf uh, match. I've had great luck with this and see what kind of group we can get. Okay, so when I moved that scope over, sighted it in. That was my first two shots with a Federal. That's actually really good. And then the next two shots, and that's really good. And then I brought it up to here. Then I came and I fired 10 rounds. You know, guys, that's not bad for just range ammo. I always like Federal, though. That, that's an impressive group. I was really surprised with that. And then I moved to the Wolf. I thought that was going to be totally different. So there you go. Probably. Okay, I want to make sure that I'm really testing everything proper here. So I went back and I put the original trigger back in. Yeah, the 40-year-old trigger. And I remember why this gun has been sitting in a quarter. If you remember the really old Rugers, when you take this out, all the all the pins just fall out. And I had lost most of the pins so i cannibalized another trigger and i put the pins in and i got the trigger all back together and back in here with all the original the hammer the spring all that good stuff let's see what we get for groups now with the boyd stock and just the scope original barrel original trigger <laughs> okay there's a huge difference in the trigger. This is killing it because that was a super tight group. The trigger is a lot harder. It feels, I'm guessing, maybe six pounds. It does have a nice reset. It's got a really nice reset. Heavy trigger pull. Let's fire some more and then we'll go down and take a look and compare. This is a head scratcher. You got to check these groups out. And then I, I'm going to take this trigger out. You got to see the trigger. Okay. So this was Federal. This is with the Velcorton upgraded hammer. That's my Wolf. Then I stuck back in the original trigger. And I, I got to say, I'm, I'm impressed. Um, I didn't expect that. The Wolf, you know, still shooting low. I don't know if just the barrel, actually that one and that one look about the same. Okay, so what's the conclusion that we can draw from this is at least based on what I just did, the trigger had minimal impact with a different stock and quality optics. I am surprised, guys. I'm really surprised with the factory barrel um, and the factory trigger that... I could get those kind of groups with this kind of ammo, good optic. Um, so the trigger would move down for me. And here's the thing though, it does vary from person to person and shooter to shooter. Some would say that I'm a really good shooter and that I have outstanding trigger control. And that is one thought that maybe I can pull off those groups with a factory trigger as where most might not. If you get the setup and you get terrible groups, you might want to try a trigger. I think right now what my recommendation to you would be for those on a budget, I think I would go with the optic first. I really like this optic. Optic, highly recommend it. I really do like the stock. I think this gives really good control and I like my Spartan charging handle. Next thing is when, of course, we have to have the Picatinny rail. And also the Boyd stock here or other stocks free floats the barrel. And I do think that makes a big difference in accuracy as well. Anyway, the next thing that we're going to have is some Green Mountain match grade barrels. And we're going to put those in. And then we'll try the different triggers again and we'll see what we come up with. Now, if you're like me and you take it apart and see that, and the pins just fall out <laughs> like that, it's so easy to lose them. Drives me crazy. These 
from Tandem Cross, I'm excited to try. Nice, and they don't come out. Okay, so I just got the Green Mountain Sporter fluted barrel. It's, uh, I think, a 16 and a half inch, and we got some really tight groups, and that was the factory trigger. First 50 now. shots with the Green Mountain, the tapered Sporter barrel. Started off up here, dialed in. Yeah, that's actually a really nice group considering the ammo came over here, you know, not bad. And then we just keep tightening up. And guys, I mean, that is cheap target ammo, and those are awesome groups. I do notice the first couple shots after the barrels cooled down, and then pretty much the remainder go right in the money. First two shots, then they moved over here, and I had a flyer. I'm really happy with that sporter barrel. Let's uh, try that with the uh, Volkortz and Trigger and see if that makes any difference. I swapped out and put back in another factory trigger with the Volkortz and Trigger upgrades. And we're gonna try this and see what kind of groups we get with this. Rack here, that was the last group that I did with the factory trigger with the Volkortz and trigger upgrade and was getting that was probably one of the tightest groups that I got so what I'm going to do now is is I've got one more green mountain barrel their cheapest target blued bull barrel non-fluted we're going to toss that on and see what we get for groups hey guys if you like this video if you follow my channel Check out my Amazon page. That's where I get a lot of these. Uh, it's where I get most of my optics. Anytime I can get my optics, I grab them on Amazon, and I've got those all listed on there, some of the tandem cross. The other one is, is if you want to help support Beyond Seclusion, check out my webpage. I've got links there to PSA, Cabela's, Tandem Cross, uh, Gun Mag Warehouse. Anyway, using my links and then going and purchasing things, it's the same cost. It simply helps support beyond seclusion i've also got some online classes you might be interested in these they're pretty awesome good reviews if not pass them on maybe somebody you know would like them your support has taken beyond seclusion to the next level i couldn't have done it without my viewers thank you very much okay so now i've got the green mountain bull barrel this is the cheapest barrel i believe the green mountain has it's just the blued bull barrel i think it's 20 inches and i've got the factory trigger with the volkortsen hammer upgrade which is so far the best group best performing most consistent and then we'll test this barrel with that and see if it gets better if it is the same i'm absolutely going to recommend the lighter barrel this thing is heavy We'll see what it does for the groups. Hammer and check out these groups. I mean, this is nice, guys. You know, it was off. Obviously, I switched the barrels. So we've got that group. And then I dialed up a little bit. And then uh, three more clicks. And I was spot on. Moved over to the next target. You know, that is awesome. Now, what I wanted to do, I came back. I dropped in the original factory trigger with no modification anything. And I got this group. I can get, as you can see, a pretty solid group with almost no difference. I've got those three flyers there. That factory trigger, as is, is a hard pull. It's a hard pull. I'm not going to go off and toot my own horn here. I am a good shot. If I really concentrate and really focus, I can pull it off. The average shooter is not. They're going to have more and more flyers. So where do we start with the build? First thing, working all the way up. Okay, so starting from scratch, what would I recommend? What did I see the best? The first thing with just your, your straight up Ruger carving is you got to do an optic. Okay, if you want to, if you want to sit and punch groups like that, unless you have eagle eyes, which I don't, this optic, I think, is absolutely the best bet. This is my favorite. Now, I know Nikon is not going out of business, but they are going to quit making rifle scopes. Grab one of these while you can. If not, we'll have to find something else. The mounts, I found some Munstrom. These are uh, the Vortex 
they're a little bit pricier. We can find some other stuff that's comparable for one-fifth the cost. So we've got the optic. We've got the rail. I found the rail on Amazon. Okay, most all of this stuff, if it's possible, it's on my Amazon page. The mount was like $10 with the screws off of Amazon. That's awesome. Next thing that I would do, you're not going to be able to put this barrel on your factory stock. So you're going to have to get a different stock. I absolutely love this Boyd stock. They are one of, I think, the best out there. They've got stocks for i don't know how many hundreds or thousands of guns they've been around this is the fourth boyd stock i love it you can't beat it for the price next thing that i would do is the barrel the green mountain barrel this one is the cheapest it's heavy it did shrink the groups compared to the other one if i am looking for target shooting bench shooting whatever, then I'm going to go this one. If it's for hunting and I got to be walking around in the woods and stuff, then I would go with a tapered barrel. And that you actually could do with the original stock. So there's another option. Scope in that barrel in original stock configuration. Otherwise, then you're going to need the barrel and the Boyd's gun stock. I do love this Spartan charging handle. Another one that I keep forgetting is I've got a little buffer in here from Volkortsen. It's like $10, $12. It does make a big difference as far as when this slams back. It's not an absolute necessity, but for the money, it's a nice add. Then when it comes to the trigger, if you want to do anything with the trigger, the first place, first thing that I would do is the Volkortsen hammer upgrade kit. That got the best groups. The Volkorts and Trigger, the TG2000, is awesome. But it's a whole lot more coin than this fix. Then the next one, and this you could put in anywhere, is the Tandem Cross Fire Switch. And I like that. You can go either way. I think that's around $40. But that's not the you know, the essentials. Anyway, guys, I hope you found this helpful. It was really interesting and enjoyable. Surprise me with some of the results. Be sure to like, comment, and sub. Remember, gun safety starts with you. Until next time, happy shooting.